Okay guys, we're back with another video today and this time we're doing a comparison and a review on the towel sampler. I've been getting a lot of feedback on the towel sampler. I've got some really exciting things to show you, but before we do that, we're gonna to have to have a comparison to have a benchmark from. So I'm gonna bring in my friend, the old S1000. So without further ado, let's get into it. So guys, we hear a lot of talk about the towel samplers, time stretch sounds being compared to the legendary S series samplers. So let's take this blessed opportunity to bring in my good friend, the S1000 hardware sampler to benchmark it against a classic and in my humble opinion, a legendary sounding sample. So guys, let's do it. The Akai sampler's time stretch feature was pivotal in jungle music. It allowed producers to manipulate and elongate drum loop without altering pitch. Okay guys, so this is a really, really, really hard comparison to do fairly. So what I've done is I've just got some samples into the Akai S1000 and I've literally recorded them in, time stretched them so that you guys can compare. So let's start with an Amen. I've got an Amen in the sampler. So here's the thing, I didn't want to use the whole of the Amen sample because when you time stretch it, it will take up too much memory in the sampler and kind of slow down this experiment. So instead of time stretching the whole Amen sample, which is quite long, I just time stretch a portion of the sample to save on memory. So all three of these time stretches have been done with different time rates and I've also changed the cycle length to get that pitch. I'll do a tutorial on that if you comment down below to see how that's actually done. But what I actually want to show you guys is let you hear the authentic sound of this actual sample. So I'm going to pitch it up plus 12. Now that is beautiful. Have a listen to that. There's one. And then let's do the two. Nice. Very, very rich and warm sound. I've got to say that already for me, this is sounding superb. It's that authentic time stretch sound. So let's hear three of them back to back. And while we're here, we'll just drop one more octave up till we're at 24. So there you have it. That's the authentic sound as a benchmark for the S1000 sampler. Now let's go over to the Tal sampler and see what we've got. Tal sampler is more than just a sample player. It's a synth inspired tool for creating unique, characterful sounds from your own samples. Here's a quick rundown. Key features. Four independent layers. Stack and blend up to four samples for complex textures analog model filters. Shape your sound with vintage style warm and grit. Powerful modulation matrix. Automate any parameter for dynamic, evolving textures. Sample import and editing. Load various formats, WAV, AIFF, etc. And tweak start slash endpoints, pitch, and more. Simple workflow. Intuitive interface focused on creative exploration, not menu diving. What makes it special? Vintage character emulates classic samplers lo-fi charm without sacrificing quality. Creative flexibility, layer, filter, modulate, and shape your samples into something new. Lightweight and affordable, a great choice for beginners and experienced producers alike. Who's it for? music producers add unique flavor to your tracks with custom samples and vintage vibes sound designers craft intricate textures and effects for games films and more for sampler lovers explore the classic sampler workflow with modern features want to learn more check out the official website at talsoftware.com Okay guys, so here we have a Tau sampler track and an Akai S1000 track 
back to back. But bearing in mind now, we've already used analog to digital converters on the actual S1000 because the exact sample we experiment with is actually from the S1000. Right crew, stay to the end of this video where you're actually going to hear the Tau sampler and an Amen sample straight from source. So not actually going through the S1000 as in the demo in this video. Guys, I put a ton of research into this video. That's why I haven't been uploading in a minute. If you're getting anything out of this content, guys, please leave a like, comment down below. By leaving a like and subscribing to the channel as well, you really be helping the channel out massively and you'll be signaling me to let me know to make more videos like this. If I get to 200 likes on this video, I'm gonna follow it up with a lot more similar content. Right, back to the video. So the cool thing to take away from this, guys, is that this actual original sample was actually sampled from a sample source onto the Akai S3000 originally, and now we're using it. So the take home from this is it's definitely a tool that you can use that doesn't degrade the sound in any way and it's it's perfect for experiment in the studios okay guys so as you can see here on this channel here i've got the tail sampler and the tail sampler is playing as it is just sort of straight out the box now what i've noticed about the tail sampler it's a little bit brighter than the s1000 to match it up what i've had to do is put a little bit 10k on the actual Akai itself and also put on some oral exciter. So let's listen to that flat for a minute and you can actually hear the difference. So the Akai is kind of like a little bit more kind of warmer if you like, not as bright or whatever the case may be. Switch on these two and we can match the two. So this is it with the oral exciter which comes up quite nicely. Makes it a bit chunkier and then also with a bit of EQ. Now remember guys, this is not a competition between samplers. In my opinion, we're using all tools out here to create. And I like using the outboard for sampling my stuff and getting it to sound the way it is. Now, bearing in mind, the sample that we're using is actually originally sampled on S1000. So I'm kind of using the best of both worlds, you know, because you've got people like, you know, Pete Cannon, they do the similar thing where they sample stuff on the Akai, set it all up, stick it into Ableton, and they do what they do. And that's how we get this kind of like old school sound. Obviously, we didn't do it this way back in the day, but this is the future now, you know? And now let's hear something that's full on done, 100% S1000. <laughs> And also now, let's just quickly hear something that's just all done on the towel sampler. And let's hear another little drop on that. So as you can hear, on this song I've got here, the strings themselves are from the actual Tau. Tau sampler is actually really good for strings and stuff. Let me try and find what that's on. It's on 11, so I'll give you a touch on that. So this string is a string that I've used straight out of Tau samplers library, I believe. Tau samplers, a cool little library. Yeah, again, a little bit clunky to navigate, you know, but I like this sampler for messing about. It's it's kind of like a sound module as well because it comes with 
its own library, if you like. And the fact that it can play sound font files gives you the synthesis element to it. And as you can see, they're using the mod matrix, which is a little bit above my head at this moment in time. But yeah, you can see the mod matrix where they've used it to create certain sounds, right? And that's a straight out of the box string. These are the Akai drums. If you want to sample on this machine from scratch, you can do that. But personally, the workflow is quite painstaking. But some may argue so is the workflow on the S1000 or any Akai sampler for that matter. Okay guys, so here is an Amen sample that is not sampled on the Akai S1000. It's just straight into the Tau sampler. All right, so I'm gonna tweak around with this now so you can have a listen to hear what it can do. So the only downfall was that I couldn't actually automate any of this in Renoise. So guys, comment down below. Let me know if you guys have had any luck automating this thing in your DAO. Right guys, here's the verdict on this cool sampler. The pros, great for experimenting with your samples, etc. So highly recommended. Good value for money. It also accepts sound fonts. It's a fair price as well. $60 for such a cool sampler is really good. Would I use it for my main go-to of building a track? Probably not because Renoise for me is just such a good workflow. And I find the user interface on Tau Sampler takes a bit of getting used to, especially pressing the back button. That lost me for quite a while. It's unable to manipulate individual slices, which I had a bit of a problem doing, but there's ways around it. Chopping as well, like slice tool for me, seemed a bit weak compared to the one in Renoise that I use. Auto key mapping of multiple samples would be a good thing to see as well. And also, you're not gonna get the same flange effect as you would in a Akai S3000 if you put two samples back to back, because obviously it being digital. But having said that, I've made a 30 minute towel production video, which I will put a link to in the description, where you guys can see me attempting to build a jungle track from start to finish using towel sampler. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care, God bless, peace out.